Hello again, grade sevens. In today's lesson, we are going to begin a series of lessons where we're actually going to start to solve mathematical equations. Uh, I said solving one step equations level one. I call them level one because these are like the easiest mathematical equations that you can possibly solve. Learning outcomes are to demonstrate an understanding of preservation of equality by applying preservation of equality to solve equations and to model and solve concretely, pictorially, and symbolically problems that can be represented by one step linear equations of the form x plus a equals b, where x and b are integers. Wow, that is, that is very, very wordy. Okay, so solving one step equations. Again, level one just meaning like a very basic level. Level one equations are written in the form x plus a equals b. Now, a and b can be integers. So an example of uh, perhaps one level one equation would be x. Let's just pick any random integer. Let's do like x minus seven is equal to four, okay? So that would be a level one, one step equation, x minus seven equals four, okay? Or it could be, x plus eight equals three, okay? A and B can be integer values. Integer values means you can be a positive or a negative whole number. There's a couple of methods we can use to do this, okay? The first method that we're gonna use is one that is referred to as the inspection method. So for the inspection method, what we do is we essentially just guess what the answer, the what the value of the variable is and just test it and make sure it actually works. Okay, so let's let's let me show you how to do this. So it says solve for the following variables using inspection and model using algebra tiles or cups and counters. Okay, so for the first one, it says 14 is equal to k plus 5. Now, what I'm trying to do is I need to guess what value do I need to sub in for k, replace for k so that both sides of the equation would be equal to each other. So really the question you should be asking yourself is, what plus 5 equals 14? Well, if you said 9, that sounds correct to me. 9 plus 5 should be 14. Now, here's how we'd show work for this. Okay, so what I'd say is guess k is equal to 9. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it straight into this equation. So we'd have 14 is equal to Maybe let's do it as a different color just to illustrate the substitution. Okay, so we're going to play, replace k with 9. So then that would be 9 plus 5. Okay, let's carry this down. Oh, that's the testing part. So we'll say test. Okay, so we guess, and then we test by plugging the number in. Then we'd have 14 is equal to 9 plus 5 is 14. And if both sides of the equation end up being the same number, it means that you guess the correct variable. So the correct solution to this equation would be k is equal to 9. Okay, we'll wrote the algebra tiles in a moment. Let's just continue to go through the, the inspection method first. Okay, so we have t minus 3 is equal to 11. Okay, so what value of t when you subtract 3 is going to be equal to 11? We need to guess what the value of t is that's going to lead to this. Okay, so what minus 3 is going to be equal to 11? Well, you should be saying 14, because 14 minus 3 is 11. So that's my guess. But now we just got to test it to make sure that both sides of the equation are the same. Okay, so when I test it, I would then have, so now we'll do a, a substitution. So we're going to replace t with 14. So then that would be 14. minus 3 is equal to 11. 14 minus 3 is 11, and that's equal to 11. And then both sides of the equation are then balanced, and that means that t equals 14 is the correct solution. So if you guess a number and then you plug it in and test it and both sides are not the same, it means that you've guessed incorrectly. So then you should go, you should go through the process again and guess a different, uh, a different value. Okay, C says 10 minus Y is equal to 8. So once again, we need to guess what the variable is. And that's, the, that's what we call the solution to the equation. 
Okay, so 10 minus what would be equal to 8? Well, it should be 2, right? 10 minus 2 is 8. So we have guess y is equal to 2. And then we test it just by plugging it into the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take y equals 2, and I'm going to plug it in right here. Just make sure that both sides are the same. Okay, so then that would be 10 minus, we'll replace the y with 2, would be equal to 8. 10 minus 2 is 8. So you have 8 equals 8. If both sides of the equation are equal or balanced, that means that you guessed the correct variable for the solution to the equation. Okay? So that's that's called that's the inspection method. So this whole thing where we're doing guess and test. That's referred to as inspection. Okay, now what we're going to do this with cups and counters and algebra tiles. You know, I really, really, really don't want to. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of like these manipulatives, but they do serve a point because they, they, they do illustrate the difference between a numerical coefficient and, uh, and a constant. Okay, so let's represent this guy with algebra tiles. Okay, so what is, this is a positive constant. So a positive constant with algebra tiles would be red squares. So we have to draw 14 of these guys. So we do one, two, oh my goodness, it's going to take forever. Three, this is why I do not like doing the algebra tiles. Three, four, five, six, seven, gets to another row down here, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay, and that's going to be equal to, okay, now the numerical coefficient, if it doesn't show numerical coefficient, it is always one, okay? So the numerical coefficient in front of the K is a one, which means we're gonna draw one rectangle We'll write the variable inside, which is k, and plus 5. So plus 5 would also be a positive constant, so that's red squares. So then you'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so red, 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 red. Okay, now the way you solve this with algebra tiles is pretend for a second that this green rectangle is like some kind of a mystery box. And what you need to do is you need to put either red or white squares into the mystery box so that both sides of the equation are then going to have the same number of squares. Okay, so right now, uh, this side of the equation has 14 red squares. Okay, this side of the equation has five red squares. So how many squares would need to go into our, my mystery rectangle or mystery box so both sides would be balanced? Well, you would need, so I'd place nine red squares, because nine plus five is 14. into and call it the mystery rectangle it's mysterious because who knows how many squares are inside of it okay so place nine red squares into the mystery rectangle to balance both sides Okay, so if you have put nine red squares into that box, that means that the box K would then have nine red squares and nine red squares is a positive constant. So that'd tell me that K is equal to nine, which is the answer we also got over here. Okay, uh, second one, we're gonna use cups and counters instead. 
So again, uh, if it doesn't show numerical coefficient, that means the numerical coefficient in front of here is a one. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna draw one cup. Okay, one cup, and then we're gonna subtract three counters. So one, two, three counters is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Good. Okay, so it's the same thing. Instead of having a mystery rectangle, we now have a mystery cup. So how many of these counters would you have to put into the mystery cup so that both sides would have the same number of counters? Well, you got to be a bit more careful with this side, okay? Because for this one, we're going to take away three of those counters, okay? So however many, mist however many counters are in the mystery cup, we need to subtract three of them away. And that's going to leave us with 11. So how many of these counters would I need in here, knowing I have to subtract three away? Well, it'd be 14. So you place... 14 counters into the, we'll call it the mystery cup now. Again, who knows what's in there? Place 14 counters into the mystery cup to balance. both sides of the equation. So if you got to put 14 counters into that cup, that would tell me the cup, which is represented by a variable of T. So that means T would then be equal to 14 counters you got to put in there. C, algebra tiles, nah, I don't want to do it. Nope. I think you get the point. We've already done one algebra tiles, one cups and counters. I'm not going to show it for this one. Okay, now there is a second method. And this method is, uh, even though we can do guess and test, okay, for like these equations, there's a second method that involves applying the opera so an operation and it involves using a technique we refer to in math as isolation. Okay, this is a much more powerful technique once we get into much more complicated equations. For now, we can guess and test, but eventually we're going to get to points where like, we, we look at an equation, we can't guess and test. We're going to need other tools to deal with it. Okay, so here's how it works. Apply the opposite operation involves performing... Uh, involves doing some form of isolation. So what are you trying to isolate? Well, you want to isolate the variable. And the way you get the variable by itself is you get it on one side of the equation by applying the opposite operation to get rid of other values that you don't want. And just to point this out, for the equations we're going to worry about today, the two opposite operations we're only going to be concerned with are addition and subtraction. Okay, so let's go for, through a couple of examples. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a few more, actually. I'm going to add a C and a D here as well, okay, in a moment, just so, let, just, just so we get a bit more uh, of a hang of this, okay? So we'll do a C, and we'll also do a D. Okay, he, here's the way it works. In the isolation method, your variable is a loner. It, it hates everything. It wants nothing to be beside it. It wants to be on this side of the equal sign completely by itself. Okay, so immediately I'd ask myself, okay, why is the variable not isolated? Like, like, what's the issue? Well, there's this plus seven that's sitting beside it. So the variable wants this plus seven to go away so it can then be in isolation. So that's where I eventually want to get to. Okay, now how do you isolate this? How do you get rid of this plus seven? Well, you apply the opposite operation. So what's the opposite operation of addition? It is subtraction, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 7. So why do we do this? Because 7 minus 7 is 0. It gets rid of it. Now, the thing with the mathematical equation is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must also do to the opposite side. So I'm trying to get rid of the 7 to get the n isolated, and I subtracted 7 to do that, and I also need to subtract 7 from this side of the equation. Okay, so let's get the variable to carry down. 
So then we would have as n plus, well, what's seven minus seven? It's zero. Okay, that was the point of this. We're trying to get the variable isolated. What's 26 minus seven? It's 19. Okay, we don't need to write down the plus zero. Therefore, we could just say n is equal to 19. I suspect if I told you to do guess and test, you could have guessed that because you would have been like, okay, what plus seven is 26? And the answer to that would have been 19. But again, we're, I'm starting to show you the work for isolation now because we need to build on this so eventually we can deal with more complicated equations. So this is much more powerful than uh, dealing with the guess and test method. We'll still do both, but the guess and test method is not really the, the key thing here. Okay, B, we have D minus three is negative five. Okay, so first things first, the variable is, an, it's a loner, it wants to be isolated, it hates everything else, okay, it wants nothing attached to it, okay? So right here, why is it not isolated? Because there's a subtraction of three. Okay, so how do you get rid of this subtraction three term? Apply the opposite operation. So what's the opposite operation of subtraction? It is addition. So we're gonna add three to get rid of it because negative three plus three will give me zero. But again, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must also do to the other side. So we need to add it to that side of the equation. Okay, so we're gonna pull the D down here. Okay, so we'd have D plus zero is equal to, okay, negative five plus three. I mean, just think of this on a number line. So like if you're going negative five plus three, you would start at the origin, go over to negative five, which is towards the left, and then plus three, if you go three to the right. So that would actually bring us up to negative two. Okay, and then we don't need to write down d plus zero. We can simply just write down d is equal to negative two. Okay, we'll do a couple more just so you can kind of get the hang of like what this looks like. Okay, so let's do, uh, I'm gonna say g minus, let's do g minus four is equal to seven. Okay, so first things first, why is the G not isolated? Because there's a subtraction of four attached to it. How do you get rid of subtraction of four? Apply the opposite operation. The opposite operation of subtraction is going to be addition. So we're gonna add four to both sides of the equation, okay? So opposite operation, because negative four plus four is gonna be zero, but whatever you do to one side, you've also gotta to do to the other side as well. Okay, so I'm going to add it to that side of the equation, and now let's carry this down. The g carries down, negative 4 plus 4, those are just opposite integers, so they would just uh, add up to give you 0. And then 7 plus 4 would be 11. Okay, we don't need to write down g plus 0, we can just simply state that g is equal to 11. Okay, and we'll do one more here. Uh, let's do, uh, let's pick p plus five is equal to, let's use a negative integer here. So let's do P plus five is equal to negative 20. Okay, so why is P not isolated? Because five is being added to it. How do you get rid of that five? Apply the opposite operation. What's the opposite operation of addition? Subtraction. So we're gonna subtract five. And whatever you do to both one side of the equation, you must do to the other side as well. Okay, so we subtract that. Okay, the P comes down. Positive five minus negative five, opposite integer, so it just adds up to zero. If you're at negative 20 degrees Celsius, and then our temperature decreases by another five, it would be even colder. So then we'd be at negative 25. We don't need to write down P plus zero equals negative 25. We can simply just state that P is equal to negative 25. Okay, and like I said, yes, you can use guess and test to do this, okay? But this is more important because we're gonna to start to build on this isolation process as we go through the unit here. And as you get into like higher up math courses, it's all gonna be about isolation in terms of how you, uh, how you solve an equation except the equations are gonna be much harder. So right now we need to get this fundamental building block down, despite the fact the equations are really simple at this level. 
Okay, so your assignment, you can complete in your MathLink 7 textbook, page 399, number 6 through 11. And then in the next lesson, we're going to look at a couple of other one-step equations, which I believe I refer to as level 2, because there's a they're slightly more complicated than one-step.